It is a common sight all over in many small communities in northern Ghana. People living with impairedness, abandoned and typically left on their own at home to fend for themselves. And their situation is no imaginary tale. I'm suffering. A professional teacher of 30 years in service, Simon Sepake has been visually impaired for five years. Now a divorcee and perpetually forced to stay at home day in day out, Simon is a typical example of anyone living with impairedness in this part of rural Ghana. And what do you miss now about life? I'm not alive now. I can't see anything because... I, 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 I'm blind. What do I say? I can't say anything. Hmm. So far, my future is gone. <laughs> Having missed classroom for the past three years, we decided to travel with Simon to his old school to demonstrate to us his teaching skills. And yet you are now students. Ten plus one minus two. Oh, you're asking me a very difficult question. I don't know that. Okay. <laughs> 10 minus 1 plus 2. Mm. 10 minus 1 plus, plus two. 2. That's 11. No, you are wrong. Oh, okay. What is the right answer? The right negative 11. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minus 2 plus 10, 10 minus 1. one Plus, plus two, two is negative, negative 11. 11. Okay, okay, so it's not 11. No. Okay, you know, I'm negative. very bad with maths. <laughs> Simon's blindness is medically confirmed to have been caused by river blindness, which is transmitted by small worms that are passed on from one person to another through the bite of small tropical black flies that carry the worm, causing blindness and various skin conditions. <laughs> River blindness disease broke out in northern Ghana in the 1980s when black flies invaded the region. And up till today, the black flies are a big nuisance to the communities. Although Ghana government health officials have said the flies no longer carry the parasitic worms that cause the disease. But the scars can be seen all over. We travel to Arigo village, some 60 kilometers from the Upper East Regional Capital of Bolgatanga. Here, in every household, there is more than one permanent visually impaired person. Many of the river blindness victims here have been living with impairedness for more than 20 years now. Uh, what is this village? This village is Arko. 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 Ah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice what is your name? My name is Kajone Sylvester. Sylvester? Yeah. Ah, okay. Nice meeting you. So, I mean, uh, we are here to um, look at the uh, problem of um, people with blindness. Okay. Uh, and uh, we are made to understand that at uh, this place there are many people yes. uh, who are visually impaired, who cannot see, yes. and uh, some of them have been living with this condition for okay. years. Yes. So we want you to, you know, take us around okay. to see the houses where, you know, these people are, and then also if you can uh, tell us how many of them are. In this village, how many, of, how many are you? Our what, population. Yeah, what is the population, population of this village? Was more than 3,000. More than 3,000? Yeah. Wow, ah, okay. And then you want to take us around, yeah? Okay. Okay, then let's go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And now uh, we are going to the... Okay. Here two. I have two women. That's my mother. They are blind. Two women? Two women. They are blind? They are blind. In this small ho uh, household? Yes. You have two women? Two women. Okay. Yeah. Also, there is a blind man here. There is two blind men is there. Uh huh. Yes. Here to two. Two. They are all men they are all or women. Men. They are all men. They are all men. Yeah. And uh, some of these people, how long have they been blind? Uh, one blind somewhere ten years back. One is four years now. And the condition of the visually impaired, especially the aged, is nothing to be proud of. They are marginalized and left alone. At 65 and permanently impaired, every other day, Miss Fortunate has to negotiate her way through to her outdoor kitchen to cook for the family. 
She lives with her junior brother, who is also permanently impaired. Inside the kitchen is engulfed with smoke coming from firewood, which misfortunate use as cooking fuel. Every day, she said, life is agonizing. What are you cooking today? Rice. Rice? Yes. Uh, are you not worried that you can burn yourself? So fire has been burning you. Uh, okay, you don't have children, Mama, to help you in the kitchen? But I'm here. I'm not here. I'm not here. She's married. Okay. And you are cooking for who? Who are you cooking for? Myself. Yourself? And there is a bigger problem that the visually impaired, particularly the aged, have to grapple with. Apart from neglect and loneliness, they have to deal with a perpetual social stigma. Mrs. Helen Kuso works with many of the visually impaired aged people in her community. She says ignorance about river blindness related impairedness is so high that people run away from victims, believing that they are witches or cursed for doing something wrong in life. You don't have, even you, you don't have anybody to sit with if you don't have children. They will always go away, even if you have got children and they are far. Nobody will sit near you. You can't get somebody to talk with. That's the pity that when you are blind, you become one way or the other. If somebody is just coming to you to do something, you know, if they give you good gold with food, you can't see. So at times we feel it. And with all the difficulties visually impaired people are going through in many of the rural communities in northern Ghana, there is little support to improve their situation. Miss Charity Bokari, a social activist and a native of Nangondi in northern Ghana, who has lived in Canada and other Western countries, but has now returned to work with her people, says more is needed to uplift the situation of the visually impaired. The uncle disease or river blindness has really come to cause a lot of havoc to both young, old, women. Some, some people, their wives have divorced them. Those men married, their wives have divorced them because they can't see and they can no more handle them. And their wives are so traumatized that they can no more take that type of uh, trauma in them. So now, what do you think these people need most? They need counseling. Counseling to let them have to, be, to cope with situations and then to lead their life. Indeed, much support used to be rendered to river blindness victims in the 1980s and 90s. According to local people, during the epidemic period, a UN program for the elimination of uncle's hair cases in West Africa used to constantly spray their communities to kill the black flies. But since that project phased out, the spraying too has stopped. Some of the locals have since forced to abandon their communities. Now, in many of the rural communities, local people, in a bid to manage the nuisance of black flies, are resort to burning the adjacent bushes. But this too comes with a devastating consequence on the environment. <laughs> 